<laughs> hey y'all welcome back to my channel for all of y'all that are new here my name is taylor i have a passion for fashion all things luxury designer travel lifestyle if that's something you're interested in please feel free to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification button so that y'all don't miss out on what i'm posting don't forget to tune in on previous videos as well we celebrated a milestone which i talked about on the last video of 500 subscribers and i'm so grateful and thankful to all of y'all that are tuned in so today i'm just like doing a get ready with me i already have my makeup in hand just doing my makeup and talking to y'all so y'all can get to know me a little bit more also if you have any suggestions for any videos you would like to see me do, please comment below and I'll definitely take it into consideration, put together what I need to do so I can put out some content for y'all of what you need to hear, what you'd like to hear. So, let's get ready. Ooh. So we've already addressed the obvious. My name is Taylor. <laughs> I'm 32 and I'm from New Orleans. So I know like the first thing that comes to people's mind when they hear something like that, I feel like the first thing they talk about is Hurricane Katrina, which is so morbid kind of. Um, it's not like a, I don't know. It's not really a positive thing, but yes, I was, I was not here, but we did evacuate. A lot of my family stayed. I was at the time 13. So then we relocated to Texas and I moved back to New Orleans where the rest of my family already stayed um, for college and I've been here ever since. So I went to Xavier University for pharmacy. I did um, chemistry pre-farm. So I did two years of undergrad and then you take the PCAT and I applied to pharmacy school, got into pharmacy school and yeah, that was four years four years of pharmacy school. So you do six years of schooling and you graduate with a doctorate, which is pretty cool because you're graduating. If you did it like how I did it, you graduate at 24 years old. <laughs> so I'm still a pharmacist to this day. And I've been a pharmacist for a while. It's funny when I think about it, I'm like, I've been a pharmacist for a long time. Random, but I only speak English. <laughs> I know. I'm from New Orleans and you're probably like, oh, does she speak Creole or French? But no, I don't. So it's crazy that I did pharmacy because you're like, how did you end up with that? And you talk about like fashion and luxury and lifestyle. Literally, I feel like I'm not, which I say, this is just me. I'm a Capricorn. And I think my rising is Gemini and my moon is Taurus or it might be vice versa but um, I'm that through and through, like all three of them. And I just feel like I'm more, I'm a realist and I feel like I don't allow myself to dream and to actually like let my heart take me there and actually like pursue things that I would like really love. So this is me doing that now. Yeah, that's like me. So that's how I ended up here in the pharmacy. I do like being a pharmacist because I have family members that come to me for literally everything. Like if you're in healthcare and you know what whatever it is, like your family members are coming to you for any and everything to get advice, to look at like labs, all kinds of stuff, right? <laughs> well, that's me to the family, which sometimes it can be overwhelming because you get really consumed in it and really invested in everyone's health, which that's why I'm really, really close to my family. And I'm really empathetic and emotional. So that's something like I really, really take hard and kind of like consume everything really and get like kind of a little obsessed uh, I feel like I have an obsessive personality because I can be obsessed <laughs> with their health, their records, their labs. I can be obsessed with a TV show because I'm a binger. If I find something that I like, I have to consume it and watch it like within 24 hours. It's, mm, yeah, <laughs> definitely an obsessive personality um, sometimes. I think it has good and bad qualities. 
good things because I do find resolution to the problems. Because I'm also a manager, um, a pharmacy manager, so I deal with a lot, y'all. <laughs> um, as far as like people, I deal with people all day, every day, okay? And when people are upset because of their medications and whatnot, and they're they're already sick, so yeah, um, you take on a lot and consume a lot, and the days are really long. Um, in retail pharmacy, I necessarily I've been like invested or involved in other areas of pharmacy as well, like the hospital and um, infusion pharmacy too, which. Definitely anybody who's interested in that off subject of any other area of pharmacy, I recommend it. Not so much retail, but I do recommend, unless you have the personality for it, because <laughs> not everybody's meant to be a retail pharmacist. If you're not a people person, that is not for you. Also, that's another thing that I do too. <laughs> so in the morning, like when I go to the gym and stuff like that, I'm talking a lot. My friend Lindsay said I'm the only person who could get her to talk at like five in the morning or six in the morning, depending upon what time we go. And I'll have a full blown conversation like I'm having right now at the five, <laughs> six in the morning. And I'm jumping from subject to sub subject to subject. I have not been diagnosed with ADHD. I'm just, I'm just all over the place. So yeah, also going back to what I said before, I, you're like, where did this passion for fashion come from? I think that I would say it's in the DNA. <laughs> and I really do believe that because my dad, he also, which my dad is deceased, but he also used to love fashion as well. It's something that people, like if they do see me or meet me and they say how I look like my dad, which unfortunately my dad passed when I was one years old. So I don't have any memories of him. And when people will talk to me or see me or say things about him, they do say things like he was very much into fashion. And then my grandma, who is my dad's mom, we're really close and she was once the same way actually up until Katrina so my grandma would take me shopping with her and I would have a blast <laughs> and I would literally get upset because when I had to wait for her to finish shopping in her section before we go to the kids section I don't know if y'all remember children's place but that used to be my spot I love children's place I remember having this like a jacket that had like stripes on it with the fur on the sleeves and I thought that that was so cool and so iconic and I don't know I I loved it <laughs> I loved it I thought it was so cool so yeah she basically fueled that for me and kept me invested in that and it just kind of grew so then when I used to see tv shows like remember at the time I was in high school so the hills y'all the hills was my shit and to this day I still will quote like different things that Lauren or everybody would say like when Elsie said that um Spencer was a sucky person like <laughs> We'll still comment on that to this day, but anywho, remember on different episodes, if you haven't seen it, you have to see it because it was a time in history iconic, but when um, Jason bought Lauren a freaking Chanel bag for Christmas, like what? My boyfriend could buy me Chanel bags? <laughs> that was like the coolest thing. I also loved Jason at the time. and. From there, that's when I would like see certain things. So like I saw some Chanel espadrilles. I don't know where I first saw them at, but I wanted some Chanel espadrilles, y'all. And you couldn't tell me that <laughs> those weren't like the coolest shoes. I was obsessed with them. I was like, I'm gonna own those one day. Power of the tongue, speaking things into fruition because now I have like several pair and I do recommend them because I was so obsessed with them why one time i actually bought a pair that was a size too small i don't know how i did that and i actually didn't realize it until like recent years because i was like why are these so much tighter than all my other ones a whole size smaller so 
I actually sold those because I had no use for them. Like they hurt when I put them on my feet. Um, and I actually don't think I've ever seen them come out with that again because it was a leather um, navy one. But you see, now I'm getting off subject and going on a tangent, but <laughs> that's when my, my love for like fashion came about. And then also too, like when I was younger, I used to have this purple box of costume looks. And it was like Esmeralda, and <laughs> all these Disney princesses. And it had like kitten heels in it and everything. And I would put it on and walk around the house and do a fashion show for my grandparents who would buck me up and tell me how cute I looked. And I just, I was loving it. So I've always wanted to do like a fashion show. I wish I had like the footage of that because my grandpa, he used to record that stuff all the time. But like I said, we lost a lot of things during Katrina, like a lot of things. Speaking of, <laughs> I was actually too in a talent show when I was younger singing. Y'all, I can't sing. <laughs> I can't sing. Um, I might be tone deaf because in my in my head, I think I sound good. But apparently when I record myself or to other people, I do not sound good. So <laughs> And the song that I sang was Christina Aguilera, Come On Over. Now, we know Christina has both goals, okay? So, I had no business. I had no business. I had no business. I had no business. And I really wish I had a clip of it to show y'all. I know I sound crazy. Because to this day, I sound crazy. But, anywho. <laughs> uh, also... To back on what I was saying earlier, like I really feel like this is an opportunity for me to pursue my dreams and like just get on here and talk and share my personality and share the things that I love with people who also love the things that I love or want to hear what I have to say. And I just feel like that's the coolest thing that spaces like this are created for YouTube, TikTok, Instagram um podcasts and you know all these different spaces for everybody and for anybody who's feeling like me who feel like they're a realist and they can't like go for their dreams blase blase that's not true you know and you're never too old <laughs> you know i was actually watching um the bachelor and the girl was saying that she felt like she was getting old um to find love and she was 31 which i understand we're getting to the age where Everyone around us is getting engaged and married, etc. So you feel like you're behind, but it's not the case. You know, everybody has their own um, timeline. And I actually saw um, it's a girl, Jenny, who I follow on Instagram. And she made a post the other day and she was talking about how she, God told her what space to be in, where what she wanted, the dream that she had. She knew she had it. She spoke to God about it. And he said he was going to make room for it. And I was like, that's beautiful. Like, I don't believe that for anybody listening, watching, I don't believe that God will put anything on your heart that he didn't equip you for. Like, he's not going to leave you hanging. He's not going to leave you without the tools that you need <laughs> to succeed. If he's putting it on your heart, it's going to happen. You know, uh, faith without work, you got to do the work, but he's not going to leave you there if you're not putting it in. Also, to piggyback off of being older and or getting in your 30s and not being engaged, you know, I honestly didn't think that it would happen for me. I always wanted to be married, but... <laughs> At some point, I was like, I did not think it was happening for me anymore. And I just kind of like gave up on it. And it wasn't a thing where I, I don't know, I, I wasn't looking for anything. And that's when it happened. <laughs> that's when uh, my fiance and I like evenly yoked and it just fell into place. And we've always known each other. So that's why I say to divine timing, because who knows you know maybe we could have met when we were or dated when we were younger we already knew each other like 10 years ago but it just wasn't the right time you know and right now everything has fallen into place everything is where it is where it needs to be 
You see this? I do this every time on this eye, y'all. Every time. Never fails. So I did fix it. It's not the best, but it'll do what it has to do because it doesn't need to be like a beat. Also, <laughs> just a little like back into ADHD and I'm thinking about it. I was on TikTok and the Gen Z girlies be doing their makeup for like their birthdays and stuff like that, like a beat. And I'm like, wow, that's really amazing. I'm not there. Because we grew up wearing like MAC lipstick on the lips and that was it. No foundation, nothing. It looked a mess. Truly looked a mess. Face ashy. Lipstick, candy yum yum with your teeth looking yellow because the pink was so pink. It was just a time. If you were there, you had to be there. <laughs> I mean, of course, now it looks, I saw a girl um, post the candy yum yum now with her makeup done. It looked really good, but on bare skin a mess also back to divine timing i do believe that whatever is orchestrated for you in that time is god is going to allow it to happen which which happened for me and my fiance i feel like the time that we met was definitely divine timing evenly yoked both prepared mature for each other and that's how things will fall into place for the next person or for you or for your friend or your family member. Everything happens the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> and if you focus in on yourself and growing and maturing and nurturing and loving yourself, all these other things and people, you'll attract those things. You know, broken people attract broken people. And when you find yourself in these situations, in bad situations or in terrible relationships which we've all been there before it's because we weren't necessarily healed in the first place so I say all that to say everything is going to work out the way it, it should <laughs> when you put in the work for yourself with divine timing when you love yourself and you give it to God and he'll orchestrate your steps let me know but this lipstick is Charlotte Tilbury and it's Kim KW and I'm assuming did Kim have a collaboration with Charlotte Tilbury? If so, I missed it, but I have the lipstick. Or if they named it after her. Mm, but this is, um, like, very much Kimmy. <laughs> with this pink. That's also my favorite um, lipstick to wear, is pink. Pink lipstick or red lipstick. Red is, ooh, very pretty. I didn't put lashes on because, honestly, y'all, I'm still learning how to put on lashes well. Um, and this is not gonna be like a beat beat. <laughs> this is just enough to not look drowsy, <laughs> enough to like still look cute. Ooh, I'll be going in on this. <laughs> and I guess I gotta do something to this head. Ooh, but I love sharing with y'all. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I wasn't like boring. <laughs> I feel like sometimes because, which is off subject again, but sometimes we get along so much of like a professional in my professional space that I get like too professional with y'all and I'm like not talking to y'all like y'all my friends because y'all are. <laughs> and so, yeah, now you can see me get into my element of going from subject to subject and jumping from space to space, okay? But I hope that you learned a little bit more about me in this video. Yeah, if you want to know more, just comment below. If you have any questions, any suggestions on the next video, I do have some more videos coming out and I can't wait to share more with y'all. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, subscribe to my YouTube. I think I hit everything. <laughs> Bye y'all.